um, okay, excellent. We are live. And uh, this is going to be a special episode because I haven't been able to get my manicure, my massages, <laughs> my exfoliation, as you can tell, in quite some time. So we're talking about spas on this episode of Entrepreneurs in Quarantine. This is my fancy my fancy uh, intro. Mademoiselle, tell us who you are and um, what you do. Well, my name is Catherine. I am the owner of Aqua Spa Lingerie, which is a, um, a spa business located in the West Island in DDO uh, that's been around for 30 plus years. Um, so I just recently took it over in, uh, in June of uh, 2008. 19 and uh i guess the world as a great way to welcome me into the uh, <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> uh world because this uh never seen before event just uh you know happens so it's, it's it's a great thing for me and i'm learning a lot my first year on the job um, <laughs> so, um i love i love i love the optimism learning a lot i'm grateful <laughs> and i'm learning a lot of the job that's the first time that we've heard um somebody grateful for such an epic uh world disaster yeah, um, but I obviously mean... i love your attitude I mean, I see it in a way that, you know, which entrepreneur can tell that their first year as a business owner, something like that happens. So, I mean, I'm trying to stay positive here and fight the good sides. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely been uh, something that uh, I believe most entrepreneurs, if not all of them, have never seen before. And we're all learning how to cope with the situation. Um, sure. and, um, so, so our industry is no different than, uh, than that. So let's go. Let's go through this a little bit. You take over the spa. This is your dream to take over a spa. You do it. You take it over. You're learning the ropes. You're getting to know the staff. This is an established business right here in Dollar des Ormeaux. Yeah. And um, this happens. So now you're not allowed to open. You're not making any revenue because you're closed. Um, you have a full staff, and um, you're trying to hang on for dear life to this to this attitude. What do you do when the government says? No more business. Yeah, well, um, actually, we were one of the first spa in, in the West Island uh, to close down before the government actually uh, took the lead and asked all of the non essential businesses to close. Um, so for us, it was really important to maintain the safety of our employees and our clients. And because of our industry and the proximity that's required to uh, to perform their services, they're very personal. It was nearly impossible um, to maintain a safe distance. So for us, it wasn't a question of, you know, if we could drag this any longer and wait for government to take a stand on that. It was really, you know, we couldn't see how we could increase our measures any further than what we've done to ensure that distance. So we actually closed down. We were the first ones to close in the March 15th. Sure. And, um, and then the government went ahead and, and asked every uh, spa business hair salons to to close for that very same same reason so it was definitely a lot of uh of of things to think about first just letting your clients know we're booked several weeks months ahead so it was hundreds of clients that we had to call and rescheduled and um and the staff also because the you know the programs for the government took a few weeks to come into place so it's a lot of questions a lot of insecurities for for all of us so um you know we had to put a plan into trying our best to reassure people and let them know uh everything that was coming from the government to help them as we got the information so it was really important to have a good communication with mm. our employees and our employee through this this tough time. Okay, that's that's amazing. I love that you talked about communication, open dialogue. You guys were proactive, which is incredible. What mm. were the clients' reactions? What were the employees' reactions? I think most uh, most clients were very understanding. I mean, we've seen. Um, in our, our clients, a, a drop in business since the beginning of March. There was spring break. There was a lot of people coming back from vacation that had to self-isolate. Um, so we had a lot of cancellation, which was 
already something that we had to deal with in terms of staffing and, and, and people coming in having no shows. So clients were very understanding. I mean, they, they for most part, they didn't want to risk it either by going out of their homes. And uh, our staff was also very understanding because they also knew that they were putting themselves into a, a precarious position by being having contacts with, with so many people throughout the day. So I think that the nature of our business um, uh, uh, made it pretty easy for people to understand that that was the right decision. I love it. So you're, you're very proactive. You're a very strong character and a strong leader. It shows even through this call. Um, how do you maintain the same presence and the same leadership uh, for staff who are uncertain as to when they're going to come back, clients who have rain checks, who are you know in desperate need of an exfoliation like me, how do you maintain that presence right now when there's so much uncertainty and now you're closed until May May fourth? Yeah. How yeah. do you how do you maintain the momentum? Uh, well, I think for us and and for most businesses and especially in our industry, I mean the service industry is art. It's not something that you can do online. You need that personal contact. Uh, so we the industry as a whole, I think, needs to reinvent invent themselves and find ways to interact with their clients through different platforms. And I think we're very lucky in our era that we do have internet. We do have a lot of technologies that are available to us, so it's easier to enter in contact with people through uh, self-isolation. Um, so really for us and how I see it is that it's it's really rare for, for business owners to have this kind of time on their ends that's, that's being forced on them. You know, you're always juggling projects, you're running a business, we're a seven day operation, there's always some something going on. So for me to have this time to really be able to sit down and be okay, how do I make the most of this time to grow my business that came out stronger to find, to innovate, find ways to take a negative circumstance and turn it into something that could potentially be positive in the end. And that forced us to, you know, grow a social media presence, grow a digital marketing uh, plan so that we're able to, to cope better with that situation. So through everything that's digital, we're really trying to communicate with our clients and not only into a form of advertising, but also into a, a form of, uh, you know, how you could take care of yourself and all the wellness of, of, of all the wellness industry. How, how can you do that from home? So, so what, you know, so like, like that's, that's a great word, uh, the lifestyle and, and showing people how to um, take care of themselves and to give their, their own treatments. And yeah. so it seems like, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs um, think that they can take this time to completely reinvent themselves like this is gonna they're gonna come out of this completely different i like your approach that you're doing one practical thing and i think this is the message that keeps coming up a lot of people think that the world is going to change and they're going to be a better person automatically but you need to take one concrete practical step to do something in the right direction you're not going to come out different but at least you're going to set the foundation which seems to be what you're doing which is amazing well well the and I mean, social media and, and digital marketing has taken such a big place in, in, in our society and in business in, in general and is part of a good plan to run your business. And that's something that um, it was it's not something that we had really developed before within our company. So now is the perfect time to sit down and really plan it so that. Uh, it's only going to be something that's going to be able to move along and, 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 and follow us through the years. So, uh, so that's how we, we see it. So now, obviously, there's a, um, a social condition of social distancing. I think that you can expect for this to last for a long time, even when the government says we're good. You know, mission accomplished. On a battu COVID-19. And now it's a thing of the past. Now... It's going to take some time for people to feel comfortable coming into our personal space, yeah. getting massages, getting our nails done. How will the fashion industry, it's the fashion industry, how will, this, how will the spa industry as a whole adapt after this is done? How will things change? Um, well, I think what what's 
what's good about our industry in a way is that it's it's hard to replace that that service by by something that you can find online so i think that eventually once things stabilize and people go slowly go back to normal they're still going to feel the need or they're going to want to go back to spas to get their nails and their hair done um so i i, I think our industry will survive um how we're going to be able to go back and reopen is it going to be under different measures of reduced staff reduced people that are going to be allowed into uh into our space at the same time uh we don't know i think we're also lucky because sanitation in our industry was already very important so our protocols were very pretty strict from the get go so we did increase them which is something that we intend to keep uh for a long time just as precaution um because like you said this is i don't think this is going away tomorrow and i think it's going to be a, a a you know a slow recovery from from all of this um so we're definitely trying going to keep those measures in, into place uh but i am positive that you know slowly like i said it may not be at full capacity at first we're going to have to adjust to recommendations and and best practices but i sure. I, do th- I do think that you know eventually we're going to be able it's a stressful period people are going to need to uh, pamper themselves and uh, and you know relax a bit so i i i'm pretty hopeful that our industry is going to be able to rebound from this what are uh, what is one thing that you've learned about yourself uh, about life, about family, about business during this this period. I think that uh, what I learned and and on a personal level um, is not to take small things for granted. Like for for me, before you know, I would never think twice about my ability to be able to go to the grocery store, just stop by a family member's house on my way somewhere. And now that we're we're not able to do that, or that just doing groceries and finding our groceries has become more difficult those are the small things that you know you take for granted that the next time i'm able to really you know have a big family gathering uh it's going to feel special (laughs) um so that's definitely one thing that i learned and and the second thing is that I, i i do think that with the right attitude when you have the right attitude and the the right outlook on a situation it, it does change a lot it changes a lot of how you cope of of how you're going to react to it uh not that it means that you cannot feel defeated or or by a situation i mean uh, for sure for for myself when i had to lay off our staff because we closed uh it took me a few days to be able to process that information because i i really it, i really took it took it the hard way um but after you know once you you get back on and you're like okay how can i make the most of this your attitude is is going to greatly help you cope with it and and i think that the, the opening of this interview really set the tone for people who don't know you yet uh, that you're you're obviously a glass half full kind of a person you've t- you're taking the opportunity uh, to better yourself as a leader and as a as a business owner um and obviously people should continue to support you how do we continue to support aquaspa gift certificates, likes on your Facebook page, comments. How do we continue to support local businesses like you? Yeah, well, we've, we're really, like I said, trying to grow our social media presence. So we do have an Instagram now. We have a, uh, a Facebook page. We have a brand new website that we launched in the fall with all of our updates. Uh, we're also trying to adapt to our clients' needs because you're you're at home now, but a lot of our clients use products, um, mm-hmm face body products we also have uh you know we sell food for a diet program so all of those people they still need the the product so we take orders we do deliveries uh so we try to adapt to the demand so yes if anyone wants to support us through uh social media um websites uh that's the best way awesome i'm gonna drop some tags and some links uh thank you for this i uh I feel more positive about all this because your positivity <laughs> is contagious. So I congratulate you. It's a great attitude. Thanks for taking the time. I'll uh, let you get back to, to drafting social media posts and then engaging with your audience. And I look forward to, uh, to seeing you at the spa.
Well, we'd be happy to have you, uh, you know, I'm sure you, you're going to need a bit of relaxation once all of this is over as well. So we'll be happy to have you. Thank you so much, Amy. Merci beaucoup. À tantôt. Merci. Bye-bye.